everyone, I'm Megan with Able Cine, and I'm taking a closer look at Able Cine's new PCU2 Plus, which is the Phantom Control Unit, the latest version. You might be familiar with the original and then the PCU2. There are some new features that I want to mention with the PCU2 Plus version. It is a new aluminum enclosure, as you can see, uh, which is very sleek and sturdy design. A couple other things that are really crucial is the power supply is also a charger, so that will charge the internal lithium ion battery up to 30 hours. That, um, that internal battery would last that long. Also, a couple new features, if you are cabled to your Phantom camera, then it'll charge the internal battery as well, which is really great. So as far as the PCU2 Plus operation goes, I can control two cameras at the same time, which is the setup that I have right now. So every change I make on the OSD of this unit will automatically change the features on the camera. So that's really great if you know you as the Phantom Tech or the operator have to be farther away from the cameras and you want to match frame rate, shutter, you can roll, you can set your endpoint, you can save and trim a shot. Uh, so let's take a closer look at how to do that with this setup. Okay, here we are looking at the operation of the PCU2 Plus, and I just want to point out I have my two cameras cabled into the PCU2 Plus, right? Camera one and camera two, and those are both connected to the VAO bobs on the, on the VAO, which I'll show you in a second. So on the on-screen display, I have multiple pages, which I can page through with the next button, and each item on here I can control with the corresponding button. And again, since I've got two cameras connected, it'll make that adjustment on both of them. Um, also, important to mention, this is able to you know, operate these cameras instead of using a computer, so I don't have to be quite as tethered as I maybe was in the past. Let's go ahead and look at a couple different settings. I have my frame rates here. It's set to 1,000 right now. Let's say I wanted to lower that for this shot. I can hit the corresponding button, and again, minus that. Let's go to 800, let's say. It'll change that on both of these cameras since I'm connected and controlling both. What's also really nice is at the bottom it's telling me how many frames that is and also how many seconds of record time I have. So I know if this is gonna work for my action. Once I hit set, both bodies have updated. Also important setting here, my resolution. Right now I'm at the 2.5K resolution. Let's say I only need 1080 for this shot. I can go to 1920 by 1080 and hit set. If you notice, I gained more frames and more time because I lowered my resolution. I've got my shutter, which right now is all the way open because I need to capture the most light for this setup. I also can change my trigger point. So if I hit here for trigger, right now 0% means it's triggering at the end of the clip. So if I wanted to change that, I could go ahead and say, let's put it at the beginning. And now I would trigger on action. However, most of the time with high speed, it's actually quite easier to trigger at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that back at 0%. Next look, I've got my ISO. This is telling me where my ISO is set, where the gamma is. If I wanna do a white balance correction, I can do so. So let's put it at a different setting. We'll go to 43 since we've got some fluorescence there and we'll check out how that looks. I hit set, changed on both bodies. If we keep going, this page actually gives me a reading of the camera temperature and sensor temperature of the main body of camera A, so I can make sure it's not overheating. This setting is for my on-screen display and video out setting, so if I wanna have my on-screen display on the onboard monitors, which is how I have it set now, maybe my SDI is going to a client and I wanna keep that off. If I wanted to turn it on, I just hit that button and it's set to on. So this one actually can allow us to go into playback mode, which we'll do after we do a shot here, and now we're back at our home page. So since I did change all of those settings, I would want to black balance the body, so I hold that button down. You can see it black references both cameras. So now we look at the image, it looks pretty good, ready to go. If I want to go into capture mode, if I'm ready, I can hold this record button down, and both cameras will go into capture mode. So now it is uh, caching. And when I'm ready, once the action has occurred on cut, I would hit trigger. And that has saved the shot to the internal RAM. Now I can go back to that playback menu. If I hold down where the PB is, 
that'll take me to my RAM. You can see it says the first clip on the RAM. This is how many frames it was. I can go ahead and hit play. It's going to play back. And what's really great is I would want to trim this shot before I save it to the CFast card. And I can do in and out points down here. So I would go ahead and keep playing until I see the action that I want to keep. I hit an in point. Keeps going. When I'm ready and that shot is over, I would do an out point. Now it tells you, you know, which frame it started and which frame it ended on. And I can go ahead and hold save. And now I'm saving this button to the CFast card. Both CFast cards, actually, since it's to both cameras. So that's pretty much it for the uh, main controls of the PCU2 Plus. Let's go ahead and look at the advanced menu. If I hold down advanced, you can erase the storage. If I was ready to do so, I could hold that down. Let's go ahead and look at next. Look at the advanced menu. If we wanted to erase storage, we could do so. We could also change the playback frame rate. You could set up to control two cameras via 3D. This is if you just wanted to do auto black button. If you do need to reset both cameras, you can do that. It's usually only necessary if you really need to. But what I wanted to show you is we can turn Bluetooth on. And here's where you could pair to a Vision Research Bluetooth dongle if you wanted to control one camera wirelessly. OK, now that we have both of our Phantom VO cameras set up exactly how we want it, which we did with the PCU2 Plus, and both of the settings match. Let's take a behind the scenes look at a setup that we did, and then we'll go ahead and watch the shot that we captured with these cameras and the PCU2 Plus. Well, that's it for now. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll catch you next time.